Hello, Maine Democrats. So happy to be with you all tonight to celebrate the launch of our 30 days of local organizing. So this is a brand new initiative for us, and I can't wait to tell you um, what we've got planned for tonight and for the next month and, and all the way to November. So as you all know, the pandemic forced us to really rethink a lot of what we do and how we continue to build and support a statewide network of democratic leaders. Since 2020, we've been forced to cancel and reschedule so many of our regular events. You remember, we weren't even able to hold the state convention in 2020, and we weren't able to hold traditional caucuses just this past March. So suffice it to say, I think we've all gotten pretty comfortable with Zoom these past few years. And I mean, the technology that allows us to connect together all over the state and all over the globe is, is truly amazing. It's really no substitute for face-to-face -face conversation. Um, frankly, it's difficult to generate the same sense of community that comes from a caucus or rally or other in-person gathering. Um, that's why starting yesterday through July 15th, we're working with democratic leaders in cities and towns across the state to convene local organizing meetings where we can socialize and really start to rebuild that sense of community. These are meetings where we can strategize with local candidates and make a plan to really mobilize ahead of the November elections. So over the next 30 days, Democrats in nearly every city and town, including some of our most rural communities, are gonna be convening local organizing meetings. We're growing grassroots momentum from the bottom up, momentum to elect Democrats up and down the ticket in November. Over 80 communities have already scheduled their meetings with many more planned in the coming weeks. And look, we know we have to mobilize in a big way this year because the future of our state is gonna be determined by what happens on election day. Paula Page and the main GOP are gonna do, and they're gonna do and they're gonna say anything they can to reclaim power. We see this every day. We saw it this week down in Hancock County. We are not gonna let that happen. We cannot go back to another LePage administration. We've had so much success with uh, Governor Mills in the Blaine House and, and Senator Jackson uh, and Speaker Fecto at the dais in, in, uh, in, in, in the main legislature. We don't have a minute to waste and we have got to get organized. So I'm excited to kick this off tonight. We're gonna start with a short video to highlight some of the truly amazing progress that Democrats have made in these past years, progress that's all at stake this November. I think you're going to really enjoy it. I'll never forget it. On the presumptive positive case, total of 42 cases. People started getting sick. Everything shut down. Shelter in place order. It felt like things couldn't get worse. Then they did. The, Capitol the world just fell out of control all at once. We never knew what we'd have to navigate when we went to work. We never knew exactly what the next challenge would be. Everyone was hit hard, but we came together. Maine came together and we had one of the strongest pandemic responses in the country. Now we're building back better than ever and real investments are paying off. Workforce investments, high-speed internet investments. The rainy day fund is at a record high and the economy is outpacing pre-pandemic growth. We're working together to lift each other up to build a better Maine. And it's meant a lot knowing the legislature has had our back the entire time. We've seen tax relief investments in career and technical education, and childcare costs held down. We've seen relief checks slated for anyone making less than $100,000. And now, maybe more than ever, healthcare is on everyone's mind. It's just critical. In Maine, insulin is now always available to those who need it. Dental coverage has been expanded for adults. Telehealth services are permanent, so all of us can get the care we need. And for our kids, for the first time, we're meeting the 55% requirement for state funding of our public schools. Democrats are working to bring down the cost of higher education, especially for students most impacted by the pandemic. Our students and our teachers have a voice in Augusta. Maine is special to all of us. Our culture, even our livelihoods are connected to the natural environment. We see Democrats protecting our clean water and they're already investing millions to help people who are impacted by PFAS contamination. Addressing the climate crisis head on is core to our values. We'll decrease greenhouse gas emissions by 45% by 2030, and we're on track to reach carbon neutrality by 2045. 
Democrats have invested millions to help Mainers make safer homes in a changing world, protect our coastlines from rising sea levels, and expand emissions-free transportation options. We've made so much progress and we need to keep going. We see a Maine that welcomes all people. We are moving towards better diversity and inclusion every day. We've made it easier for veterans and their spouses to find work, buy a home, and access mental health services. We've said that Mainers should have autonomy over their bodies and reproductive decisions, regardless of what the Supreme Court says. We take care of each other, and that includes the aging members of our community. People should be able to stay in their homes and enjoy their golden years, free from abuse. We've had each other's backs. We've made so much progress, even though things have been hard. A brighter future is possible. A future where jobs and quality education are within reach. Our climate and environment are a priority, and everyone has access to quality, affordable health care. Let's build it together for all Mainers. Man, let's face it. I just love that video. I've seen it a bunch of times now. Democrats have so much to be proud of this year. Um, and we, we've got some really great guests with us tonight. And I'm going to kick it off. We're going to hear from one of the people really responsible for some of the great work that you just heard about in that video. Um, I'm really excited to introduce my friend, uh, the Assistant Majority Leader of the Maine House of Representatives, uh, Rachel Talbot Ross. Hey, good evening. Thank you, Drew. Thank you so very much. Um, it's really a pleasure. Actually, it's, it's quite exciting to be with you all uh, this evening as we kick off the 30 days of local organizing with the Maine Democratic Party. Uh, as you've heard from June 15th uh, to July 15th, we will be focusing on providing as many Mainers as possible uh, from all across our cities and municipalities and towns uh, with opportunities to socialize and connect, meet local and state candidates, uh, and get organized for a very successful 2022 election and beyond. I'm very, very excited about uh, being able to just articulate all of the things that have been done. Uh, it is, and many times feels quite overwhelming, all of the things that we've set out to accomplish and what we did uh, on behalf of all Mainers. It's important to highlight uh, that voters in our state have elected Democrats to the majority for the past several cycles, which proves uh, that we are really doing the work of the people. Um, Democrats have led and we will continue to lead the way. Uh, you know, it's really important, I think, um, that we talk about how we're leading and what we have accomplished. You heard a little bit about it in the video. Um, but at the beginning of the session, uh, we actually sit down and develop a policy framework, a blueprint, if you will, so that we can be assured that we are matching our shared values with our policy work, that we leave nothing to chance and that it's not arbitrary. Uh, we owe that to the main people. And so uh, some would say at a very, at a, a very ambitious agenda that we set for ourselves, um, we um, have done uh, the best, uh, reaching historic highs, setting historic pathways uh, to better the lives of all Mainers. Under the leadership of Governor Mills, Speaker Fecto, President Senate, uh, the President of the Senate, uh, Troy Jackson, uh, we have accomplished quite a bit. Our goals included a set of comprehensive, bold yet achievable um, uh, targets across a, a very broad ideological spectrum. This wasn't about a liberal agenda or a moderate agenda. This was about how to do the best work for all Mainers uh, in any region, regardless of the zip code. Uh, so it was a bold agenda. Uh, that we set for ourselves. We focused on health care, on education, as you heard, climate change, energy, and our environment. Very, very, very big uh, efforts to uh, look at PFAS and to preserve the land in our great state. We looked at justice and justice uh, reform. We tackled economic recovery, uh, social justice, equity, and of course, uh, really supported the efforts led by Governor Mills in thinking about the COVID-19 response. Uh, a couple of specific examples I really love for you uh, to know about tonight is that um, we did, uh, we were able uh, to invest historic highs, historic amounts of money, $65 million investment in our strained behavioral health care system. We improved access uh, uh, to children's mental health uh, services. We expanded CHIP, the Children's Health Insurance Program, uh, to cover an additional 40, 
thousand Maine kids. Uh, we passed legislation that extended regular dental care coverage to an estimated 217,000 Mainers. We addressed the shortages of our healthcare workers and our essential uh, support workers, tackled the alleviation uh, of the disparities in our healthcare system, and looked at disparities in our health outcomes, more importantly. But critical to all of us, I know that you join me uh, in um, being impacted every single day, uh, we did improve access to substance use disorder services, and we agreed, we agreed as a value that comprehensive care includes mental, dental, behavioral, and reproductive care as basic health care needs. We agreed on that, and we have passed legislation on it, funded it, and we continue uh, to work on that. To facilitate Maine's uh, economic recovery from the pandemic, as you just heard, legislation was passed to raise the municipal revenue sharing. We lowered property taxes, bolstered Maine's heritage industries, very, very important, expanded bro uh, broadband, and we work to develop a strong, diverse workforce that allows our businesses to thrive. By increasing funding for housing, access to housing, by $22 million this year during the 130th legislature, we have now funded access to housing for all Mainers to well over $120 million. It's not enough, but it is a great, great, great historic step uh, in addressing our health, uh, our home and healthcare crises. Um, I, would, I would dare to say, uh, as the film pointed out, that one of our proudest moments uh, our proudest achievements came uh, with our ability to fulfill the state's commitment to Maine schools uh, by funding 55% of K through 12 education. And to ensure that our public schools uh, continue to get the support that they need, uh, we also created the Education Stabilization Fund. That way, we are not going to fall short on our commitment to Maine schools, Maine students, to our municipalities and our teachers. I think we can all be excited and thank uh, Governor Mills for this vision, which was to fund uh, two years of community college for uh, Maine high schoolers who will graduate from high school in the next several years. Uh, access to education absolutely is a workforce development issue, and it's going to keep Mainers uh, employed and enjoying a high quality of life. So that funding of community college uh, system was uh, heroic and historic. I could go on um, and name just uh, so many other ways in which we have achieved some of our goals. Uh, just get a shout out uh, to President Jackson on being able to fund uh, school lunches so that no child, no student, no person in our education system goes hungry. Um, obviously, the historic steps to address climate change, the environment, and the money that we put in to land for uh, Maine's future uh, is uh, just exciting, exciting that we're going to uh, conserve uh, many of Maine's most precious resources. So um, without going any further, I could absolutely talk forever about all of the accomplishments that we made. Um, but please um, know that your uh, House Senate Democrats, uh, Democrats across each one of our branches of government, working hard uh, for all Mainers, for all Mainers, each and every day. And we're excited about the next 30-day challenge. And I'll uh, pass it back off to you, Drew. Uh, Representative, that's quite a list. Thank you so much. Uh, we are so lucky to have you in the House. Um, so next, we're going to hear uh, all the way on the other end of the state from another incredible um, and, and, and very well-known Democratic leader. Really proud to introduce Allagash's own Senator Troy Jackson, President of the Maine State Senate. There. Hey, everyone. Sorry about that. Uh, Troy Jackson, I am, like Drew said, uh, up in Allagash tonight, 313 miles from Augusta. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited to be here tonight and, and uh, to hear uh, Drew speak. And then uh, my good friend, Rachel Talbot Ross, talk about all the things that, uh, you know, we were able to do over the last couple of years. Uh, it's really quite uh, impressive. Um, you know, if I do say so myself, but the other thing about it was, that, you know, there were so many things that oftentimes it's hard to tell everyone uh, what actually was going on and, and myself included, I, you know, I forget about, oh yeah, you know, we actually were able to do that also. Um, 
And that's what happens when you have people in the House of Senate and the Blaine House that actually care about uh, Maine people. Uh, you know, the list is, is long. Uh, certainly, we still have a lot of things we want to get accomplished. Uh, but I can tell you, um, you know, from serving in the Senate uh, for, you know, six of uh, Governor LePage's uh, eight years, uh, you know, we didn't get anything done. Uh, and, and that's what we're looking at if we go back to that. And that's, I mean, I can tell you point blank what, what you know, we're looking forward to. It's going to be more tax cuts for the wealthiest people in the state on the backs of uh, education, on the backs of property taxpayers, um, you know, and that's not even a secret. They'll tell you what their plan is. And, and, and that's what, you know, we can't go back to. Uh, that and a whole bunch of other things that are, you know, really bad for everyday working class people. You know, just this week, you know, we saw an election in Hancock County where we had a great candidate. I mean, and that's where it starts. It's people that, you know, are sincere, they're honest, they want to work for their community. And Representative Grahowski was that person. And she worked incredibly hard, um, you know, to, to win that race. Because right from the start, uh, when, when we had a uh, county caucus to um, actually where she won the nomination for that race, right from the start, the Republicans started lying about her. And that is also what we're going to see in this upcoming election, is they do not have a problem uh, bending the truth or even outright lying about it. They just don't let that stop them. And that's why it's incredibly hard for us uh, to push back on that. You know, I've told people for the past couple of months uh, that talk about, you know, spending. Well, it takes a lot more money to counteract a lie than it does for them just to go ahead and lie. And that's why th these organizing events are so important. You know, Nicole, um, you know, had a great team in place and we had a whole bunch of people uh, that stepped up, you know, from organizing uh, to work in that race and, and getting out and talking to people about the real issues that were affecting them and, and countering, um, for lack of a better word, the bullshit that they were spreading uh, was exactly what we needed. And that's why these rural organizing or organizing across the state is so important. Uh, we need to have people, uh, you know, obviously you have to have candidates that, that are, are committed to go out, but we need to have people that are out there in the communities uh, that are pushing back, that are telling people, uh, you know, what Democrats stand for, what Democrats are fighting for, um, and, and what actually Democrats have done over these past uh, four years. You know, it, it infuriates me that our very own convention, you know, they came there to demonstrate, to talk about how Democrats in federally and in the state raised the gas tax. Well, that is absolutely untrue. You know, the gas tax had not been raised since 2009, but again, they had no problem saying that. And, and, and that really is quite important right now. When you take the issues that we've had with uh, electric rates and, and on top of that with what's happened with uh, Ukraine and, and the big oil companies not wanting to put out as much supply um, as they used to, obviously the price of fuel, the gas is at an all time high in this state and in this country. And it's affecting people. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, today I have logging trucks going by my house here. Uh, and every time, every hour uh, that those people are working, they're not making anywhere close to the money that they were last year when things were very tight. And that, I mean, you can't help but, you know, be frustrated and be angry at things that are out of your control when that happens. And that is why it is so, so important uh, for us to be out in these communities, you know, trying to uh, counter uh, some of these outrageous claims, trying to explain to people what actually is going on, and then on top of that, trying to explain to people what we want to do to help. Uh, you know, Governor Mills come out with a bill that, you know, we carried to Senator Brenner to try and, uh, you know, do something to get in and look at electric rates, you know, make sure that we always had a seat at the table, push back, I mean, currently the, the rate increases that they've asked for, Governor Mills is uh, saying that she's going to be right there to stop it with, along with the rest of us. Um, you know, and, and some of the bills that, uh, you know, we actually did uh, help small businesses with, with, you know, giving back some of the surplus and on top of the $850 that 833,000 people are getting. Those are putting money back in people's pockets to, to try and counter some of these Real, real, real problems that people are dealing with right now. And we're going to continue that. But if it goes the other way, 
what we're going to have once again is tax cuts for the wealthy. And how is that going to help anyone with, with their heating oil, uh, help, help them with their gas bill, help a lobsterman, you know, down in uh, Stonington that's, you know, paying $6 a gallon for their, their diesel. It's not. It's not going to help them at all. It didn't last time, and it certainly won't this time. And, and getting out, like I said, uh, having those conversations, and on top of that, finding out what else uh, we can do. You know, a lot of the bills that, that I've put in over my time have actually come directly from people that I've had conversations with and, and great ideas, and that's how, how we get them. And, and, and I think more than anything, it's about getting out and, and understanding your community. I think we do that. That's why even in times like this when it's really, really hard, people, um, you know, just just understand that, you know, things might be tough, but but we're in their corner. Always have been and always will be. And, and you know, we're going to fight for them uh, regardless of how tough of times it is. So I can't tell you how much I appreciate, you know, the work. Like I said, SD7 was a perfect, perfect example how we can turn this, how we can take good candidates, great candidates, and win regardless of what the national headwinds tell us. All we got to do is knuckle down, fight, and uh, and make sure people know that, uh, you know, we're going to be there with them all, all the way. So thank you for tonight. Look forward to working with you over uh, these next four or five months, and thank you for what you've always done in the past because I know it's a big deal, and that's what gets people like me all the way up in Allagash elected in the top t district. <laughs> Thank you so much, Senator Jackson. Always telling it like it is. I'm really just so excited you're able to join us today. Um, all right, so now our final speaker. Uh, uh, I think you all know who it is. Uh, she doesn't really need too much of an introduction, but I'm really proud to introduce our current governor and our future governor, uh, Janet Mills. Good evening, Governor. Thank you, Drew. And thank you, Senator Jackson, Representative uh, Rachel Talbot Ross, and so many of you out there listening. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you for helping out in the next 30 days and hopefully the next few months as well. We've got a lot on our hands, a lot to do, uh, and a big agenda. You know, um, part of our job is to remind people what we've done. And Senator Jackson and Representative Talbot Ross have just done that ably. But I want to remind people what happened eight years before I took office, too. And we can't let people forget um, the eight years of basically economic stagnation the eight years of um, losing, losing time uh, to fight climate change, eight years when we didn't expand health care. In fact, it was restricted more than ever before. And so, and my name is on the ballot. Senator Jackson's name is on the ballot. Representative Talbot Ross's name is on the ballot. Many other people's names are on the ballot. But what's really on the ballot this November is health care. What's on the ballot is infrastructure. What's on the ballot is climate change. What's on the ballot is the ability to love whom you want to love, the ability to be uh, employed and not discriminated against, not harassed. What's on the ballot is re reproductive rights. <clears throat> What's on the ballot is safety in our homes. What's on the ballot is uh, everything that we've been fighting for in recent years. What's on the ballot is education. Let me just go back a couple of years when I first took office and the first year of office alone, we enacted a budget. And first of all, we expanded Medicaid as the people told us to do. And as my predecessor, who wishes to be my successor, vetoed five times. So the first thing I did was to, by executive order, implement the will of the people, respect the will of the people and expand main care. Medicaid in, in the state of Maine. And now about 93,000 people have health care who didn't have it before. And thank God they had that health care before this pandemic hit. Thank God they had that. Thank God we had the first year of my administration to re restructure and <clears throat> restore the public health infrastructure in the state of Maine, which had been decimated by my predecessor. Thank God we had the first year to enact firearm safety legislation, a yellow flag bill by getting everybody to the table and coming up with a solution tailored to the state of Maine. Thank God we had the first year of my administration to do some workers' comp reform, again, by getting everybody to the table. Thank God we had the first year of my administration so that I could um, uh, 
enact a ban, sign into law, a ban on the uh, abhorrent practice of conversion therapy. Thank God we had that first year under our belt before the pandemic so that I could draft and ena have enacted one of the most progressive paid leave, earned paid leave bills in the nation. And so we could start to address the opioid epidemic. If you remember, my predecessor refused to let Narcan be distributed around the state of Maine or be disseminated over the counter, even after the legislature said, we got to do this. We got to do this. I did that as attorney general, distributed Narcan and saved thousands of lives. And we've done that since I took office as governor, saving thousands of lives and helping restore lives, turn them around, hiring and um, training up recovery coaches all across the state of Maine, funding more residential services for people with substance use disorder and the like. You know, the, my predecessor, you will remember, but some people have forgotten. He's the one who claimed that he was Trump before Trump, quote unquote. He's the one who took strong stands against abortion rights and, and for right to work legislation. He's the one who called our public school teachers a dime a dozen. He's the one who led us in 2016 to a place where we were only 49th in job growth, 49th in the country in job growth. He's the one who declined, refused federal fundings for all kinds of things, including Alzheimer's research and health care, about an estimated $2 billion in federal funds. He turned away. He's the one who gutted our public health infrastructure. He's the one who supported the Trump Muslim travel ban. He's the one who banned, again, the distribution of Narcan. He's the one who voted... Um, I mean, so he vetoed bills to uh, that were, were intended to f fight climate change and clean energy measures over and over again. He's the one who issued a moratorium on renewable energy, wind power, for instance. He's the one who joined a coalition of Gulf states that would support drilling for oil off the coast of Maine, in the Gulf of Maine. So... When we talk about the changes and the contrast, the contrast, I think, could not be clearer between my administration and the past administration, and my predecessor, who wishes to be my successor. But I've been delighted and energized to work with a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate these last three and a half years to move Maine forward, to make progress on things like reproductive health care, things like prevailing wage for public con contracts, things like climate change, joining the U.S. Climate Alliance, um, instituting, organizing a climate council and issuing recommendations and codifying our goals to be carbon neutral by 2045 and the like. Voting rights with the help of Shanna Bellows, our, our, our excellent Secretary of State, enacting voting rights laws that codify our protections uh, for voters. Um, so much has happened and so much can happen, so much more can happen in the next four years. We need to move Maine forward. Let's just talk about one issue briefly, and that is reproductive rights. We know that any minute now, the U.S. Supreme Court is going to issue an opinion, most likely reversing Roe v. Wade, the law of the land for the last 49 plus years. I don't know about you, but I know that as long as I am governor, I will work to protect the rights of women, the rights of reproductive health care. I disagree with uh, Justice Alito and his colleagues. I do not believe that women's rights are dispensable. And I will make darn sure that we keep in law the protections that we've enacted the last three and a half years and the protections we've enacted for several decades before that. Nothing could be greater of greater importance, nothing's more at stake in this coming election than that issue. The issue of children and education with the help of a democratic legislature. We've, we've provided 55% state funds for education. Finally, first time in the history of the state of Maine, we have fully funded education. We enacted universal pre-K. We enacted a minimum teacher's salary for teachers, public school teachers and universal free food in our schools, free meals, breakfast and lunch. That's a first. And we did it by working across the aisle, but with leadership from the Democrats in the House and Senate. 
on the Appropriations Committee. committee. The Land for Maine's Future, Conservation Measures, Electric Vehicle Funding from the Efficiency Maine Trust, all these things are our initiatives and they must continue. We must keep Maine safe and healthy and preserve it for our children and grandchildren. So this November, we're all gonna go to the polls. We'll make our voices heard and we will send Democrats back to the House. We will send Democrats back to the Senate and I hope a Democrat back to the Blaine House. I have so much more I wanna do with the help of good leadership from Democrats in the House and Senate. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you, Drew and the Maine Democratic Party for this initiative. Um, let's move forward, not backwards. Let's not go back. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Governor. That was fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to be here with us tonight. Um, so folks, you just saw it. I mean, we are so incredibly lucky in Maine to have compassionate, thoughtful Democratic leaders. We saw three of them tonight. Um, you know, there are others. Uh, we have such a great team. Um, if I were, if we were in person tonight, I'd ask for another round of applause for our speakers because that was really just, that was just really awesome. Um, so you've heard me talk about our community, community organizing efforts, and you heard from our elected leaders about what we've been able to accomplish in these past four years, the importance of local organizing, especially in our most rural communities, and what's at stake in November. So I bet you're just like sitting there wondering, right? They're in your homes. Now what? Well, now it's time to get organized. So what I want you to do is to please sign up to join the local organizing meeting happening in your community. Over 80 meetings are already published on our website. You can see a full list and additional information available at, listen to this, www.maindems.org slash organize. We're continuing to discuss to schedule and publish meetings on a rolling basis. So if you don't see your city or town listed yet, don't sweat it. Check back soon for updates and follow us on social media for updates about meetings as they're being scheduled and coming up. You can also reach out to your Democratic County Chair to find out who might be organizing something in your town. And I know we're also still looking for volunteers to host these meetings. Uh, if you've ever helped organize a caucus, it's kind of like that, but I promise you we're going to make it easier. We're hosting an informational webinar in just a few minutes. If you want to sign up right now, again, at, at www.maindems.org slash info, um, you can join the webinar. We'll make sure you have all the tools you need to host a meeting in your community. With so much at stake this year, from abortion access to health care, we can't afford to waste even one single moment. The future of our state and our children is going to be determined by what happens in November. I've seen what a LePage administration is capable of, and it's not pretty. And, and I don't have to tell you all, but we just really can't truly afford to go back. So join us. Let's hit the ground running in every community across the state, from Auburn to York, from Mechanic Falls to Madawaska. We're going to build the biggest grassroots movement the state has ever seen, and it all starts in our local individual communities over the next 29 days. So let's just get this done. Let's do it. Let's get to work. And I'm just so excited to see you all on the campaign trail. Thank you very much.